There's quite a few things I want to test with the paper artsy matte tints and the first thing I'm going to do is test it with walnut infusions. Infusions are activated by spritzing water but what I wanted to do is test to see how they react with the matte tint. I'm not going to mix the granules with the fern matte tint. I'm literally going to dab them as they are and I'm going to push those through the stencil so that the walnut granules stay separated from the matte tint. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix the walnut granules with the fern matte tint just so that I can see what it's like with a flat colour. It gave it a really lovely consistency and I actually prefer it to where it's spritzed with water. I then did the same thing again um, on a slightly more transparent piece of um, tissue paper and I did some where I hardly mixed it and then I mixed it to get it slightly stronger but that was just using a little bit more of the infusions than, than anything and that was mixed with the fern matte tint and um, then I did it also with the slimed infusions with the with the matte tint on this one and you can see how much stronger that green became with with the infusions this was just literally using the matte tint with mixed in infusions so here is where i i got it where it still stayed speckly on the sponge and this was where I actually mixed it in together, like you saw me do earlier. I've then on, also gone on to doing it onto some cotton fabric, which I pre-treated with some gesso, just to see how that would respond with that. And you can see again here is where I haven't used the, or I haven't mixed the infusions together. So it's become a little bit more speckly. And here is where I've actually mixed it in, so it becomes more flat. But the the actual matte tint mixing it with the infusions gives you such a beautiful finish it's so creamy um it's i like the transparency of it and it, it works so beautiful through the stencil here i've tried it with the gesso on not gesso sorry with the grunge paste through the stencil and this is just the grunge paste as it is on its own here I've mixed it with a little bit of the matte tint in the fern and you can see how the colour difference is just strengthened the colour slightly but it's still allowed that to be just so very um, pale rather than really opaque. Here I've mixed it with the slime so you can see the difference between the two greens being a lot more opaque or transparent. Um, I have to say, this one took a lot longer to dry than the matte tint um, mixed with the grunge paste or the grunge paste on its own. I like the way that when you mix it with the grunge paste, it became a lot more creamier to, to actually apply through the stencil. Um, and then I went one step further and I've got some like, it's almost, with tissue paper comes something or another that was wrapped in some flowers and I thought I like to try and use that. So again, I've used it through a stencil and I've done it where I've got just plain grunge paste. I've mixed it with a slight matte tint so you can see the colour difference. And then also I've mixed it, the matte tint, with the slime too. And again, this one took a lot longer to dry. I, I'm not sure why, but it did take a lot longer. On this one, oh my goodness, look at this. The infusions on the tissue, wherever paper it is, and uh, where I've not mixed it. But the creaminess of mixing the matte tint with infusions, with grunge paste. It was, again, it was so creamy to apply. Took a little while to dry, not, not too long, but I love the textures of that. I love the way that it's slightly opaque, but um, also on the tissue paper behind, if we're layering that up with other things, you're going to see 
what's coming through that. And I think that's what I really love about the matte tint, the fact that it is transparent and the fact that when you layer it up, you can see what's underneath it. So let's have a look and see what it's what it's like we're using it with an ad as an adhesive. I wanted to compare it with sticking things down with either Mod Podge or Gel Matte Medium. I'm using Mod Podge here. It was quite obvious where the Mod Podge was with the clearness of the white tissue paper against the matte tint of the fern on the left hand side. Remember to use the little trick of using water along the edge of where you want to tear with your tissue because it leaves a lovely feathered edge. So you can see the difference between using just the matte tint with the infusion in it without any matte tint behind it and I again love the transparency of that coming through. If you wanted to make it so that you've got the matte tint in the background I, I use that as the adhesive on there you can see how the colour behind it has changed. I'm not sure which one I prefer because I like them both, but I think in the right context, it can be used either way. So here I want to test how the grunge paste mixes with dragonfly onto some packaging paper and some waxed brown paper. So you can see that um, it's quite a creamy mixture and it's made it a little bit more runny than what the grunge paste is without it and obviously the more matte tint you put into that the more runnier that will become. So I'm going to try some of that onto some book paper to see how opaque that is when I spread it. And obviously that will depend on how thick I put it on to how transparent that's going to be. But it's got a slightly yellower tinge to it um, with the grunge paste. And I wanted to see how that looked onto the brown packaging paper as well. And I really like the way that that was quite a soft look on the brown paper. So I wanted to compare how the Dragonfly matte tint mixed with gesso against how it mixed with the grunge paste. And the first thing I noticed was how much whiter and brighter it was than with the grunge paste. And again, I wanted to see how opaque or transparent it was on that as well. So just because I like to be able to see text coming through my work, I wanted to know how thin or how thick I had to paste it to, to see what sort of outcome I got. So 
So here you can see the difference close up with the bottom being mixed with the grunge paste and the top being mixed with the gesso. That is using the Dragonfly Matte Tint by Paper Artsy. I really like the way that mixing the matte tint and the grunge paste together works on these um, packaging papers and an old book paper more so than the gesso mixing it with the gesso with the gesso it's a lot more white with the grunge paste it's a lot more sort of yellowy not so much yellow but sort of a yeah it's a very diffuse and softer color than a more lighter whiter brighter if you like and i think that is going to going to become um, a favorite I think of how I'm going to be applying that into my mixed media work because I love the way you can still see through it when you scrape it even though you can still see through the one or block it out with gesso I just think that the texture of that is so nice plus it was really creamy when I applied that so I think that you're going to see that quite a lot in my work. I love the way that the shark tint, the matte tint, gives you different contrasting colours where the gesso is and isn't on the fabric. See what it looks like over the the top directly over the top of that one. Obviously the bit underneath has got gesso on the fabric so it's gonna soak into parts of the fabric but it's slightly darkening the colour of the grunge paste that's been mixed with slime that's quite i quite like the diffused distressed kind of look that it's got let's see how the shark matte tint um, responds to the infused walnut and um, fern over the top so we're layering it up let's see how dark it gets over this one bearing in mind that I put gesso onto the fabric I just want to see how that then just sort of darkens that up again it's soaking into the fabric differently but that's actually really nice got some really cool textures going on in there. I'm actually really loving this little area here which I think would be making a really lovely key ring so I think I might cut that bit out and then put some kind of eyelet through it and maybe stick it on some cardboard or something but um, yeah, I'm loving the fact that you've got the different colors going on between these two. Back to this one now, it's really dry. Let's see if we put another layer over this area, how that changes things. So I think I'm going to use again the shark because I quite like the smoky grayness of that. Um, I think I might just put some out on my paint palette first and do it just a little bit um, maybe down this one line see what changes that does to it it's 
making a very small change. It's quite subtle, but I quite like that. Very subtle. Let's go back to the one where I use the grunge paste with the matte tint and the gesso with the matte tint. You can see now that it's dried, the one with the grunge paste is a little bit more sort of a yellow tone than the sort of real whitey. And it really did um, soften the strength of color with the dragonfly. So I wanna see what happens if I then use the dragonfly over the top of these two test pieces to see what colour happens to the, to the waxy brown craft paper uh, and what might happen to the colour of the tint of these ones because again what we're looking at is to see how much it builds up in a tint the more layers we put onto this. So I'm going to put this directly onto and put it directly onto the piece of, of paper here and see how that works. And what's quite nice is because it's transparent, it's picking up the texture of what was on the gesso and the grunge paste. So it's, it's picking up like the different colors or the different intensity of colors, if you like. So it's quite nice that you've got some more transparent areas coming through and some deeper areas coming through. Now, interestingly, it's making the colours very similar to what they were, regardless of whether you've used the grunge paste or whether you used the gesso. But obviously, grunge paste is far thicker than the gesso, and so grunge paste is going to give you more depth of the colour differences in here, but also the different depth of the texture in here. So it's going to be interesting to see how that then responds under the sewing machine. So again, I'm going to be using the fern matte tint and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put that on my paint palette first, I think. And then I'm going to just bring that across. So again, you can see how the colors change with that as an extra layer over the top. And this is on tissue paper, so it is going to soak right through a little bit. This is the sort of tissue paper that you would get out of a shoe box, like a pair of trainers or something. It's not a clear tissue paper. It's almost like a, a beigey tissue, soft tissue paper. And again, you can see it's going transparent, but it is slightly darkening the color that I've used here. So now that this one has dried, I've dried it with a heat gun and I kept it moving so as it didn't get stuck on the, the paper behind it. But you can see there is a very slight colour differentiation here where it's slightly darker, obviously, where I've used the matte tint over. And um, it's put a very, very slight colouring over where I use the grunge paste. Let's have a look and see how the grunge paste this stuff is a bit thick. Um, the grunge paste reacts with the shark matte tint. Obviously the shark tint is much greyer than the dragonfly. Um, and I want to test that one onto brown. This was an old, uh, I don't know, gift bag. One of those ones that you get at craft shows. Um, I want to see how it responds to that. I've got some black tissue and some straightforward white card. I want to see what it looks like on on that. 
before I put it through. Yes, again, I think I've used a little bit more matte tint this time, so it's a bit more runny than it is. So I'm just gonna add a bit more grunge paste to that to give it a little bit more, oops, that's old and thick. So it's a little bit more pliable. Let's use that one. Doesn't want to come out. I've had this for a little while. Oh, you know how it is when you forget you've got some wonderful supplies because you've got stuck with using other things right okay so here we go see it's gone quite a nice gray kind of color which is quite nice so again it's taking the color out right let's see what that looks like on there so as it's a softer color it's taken the color away a bit but i quite like that onto the black And onto the white card so I can compare the three. You can see against the white card the colour difference. Again, it's sort of like a, a grey kind of colour. Almost like a putty in a way. It's taking the blue, the real blue out of it. And I think what I'm going to do. So I'm going to grab a stencil and I think I will choose this one with the um, so PS202 Sarah Nauman and I'm just going to press that onto, without getting that all over my fingers, I'm going to press that onto the grunge paste. So I'm using it almost in reverse rather than squeezing it through, I'm going to squeeze it on to that see how that responds through to that and pull that off and see what that's done oh that's made a really nice imprint I don't know whether you can see that it's imprinted on there which might be really nice in a moment once that's dry I can scrape another layer of the, the matte tin over it so while this is wet I'm going to do the same thing with this on the white card here, really press that in. Oh, it's not worked quite so well. I think I've left that too long and it's dried a little bit. Let's see what it's like. And I might just scrape that through on this one because it's been left a little longer see how that works. I do like to test and play and just experiment with these new products because you just don't know what else they're capable of doing other than what we've been told you can do with them. Oh wow look at that. Oh I really like that. I really like that. That is, oh that's so much fun. I like this one so much, I'm going to do it again. Um, and this time I'm going to try it. Um, oh gosh, this grunge paste is quite thick. Um, I'm going to try it with the fern. Where did I put it? There it is. I'm going to try it with the fern. And I'm just going to put a few drops of that. Uh, five drops of that into my grunge paste and I've probably used about maybe a teaspoon of grunge paste so again it's quite a light colour and I'm liking the fact that it's a transparent colour because it is just very subtle rather than having it a strong colour that you could mix with paint plus the matte tint is thinner so it's going to make that really easier to use than being really thick and gloopy so I'm liking it on the black because it's again it's not a solid solid color and some of the white sorry some of the black 
is going to be left behind so that the color behind as you know i really really love textures so the color behind is going to be pulled off and it's not going to be a solid solid color i'm liking these colors mixed together you can see it's like a softy sagey greeny kind of color and i think that works remarkably well against the black so pressing my stencil into this one again i'm loving these little flowers i think they're great so i'm gonna i think i scraped that last time didn't i pushed pressed into and pushed into that with the spatula just to really allow that to squeeze through it and impress into it look at that oops don't get it stuck I'm loving that that is just gorgeous well in my eyes it is anyway look at that I'm going to do some more of that this time what I've done is I've put the grunge paste with the matte tint in one area of where stencil is but as you can see, there's some black areas of the tissue that have not got the, um, the mixture underneath. So by scraping off what's being squeezed through, the image of that flower won't be just on solid white, but it will then allow some of the lines to come through onto the black tissue. So leaving a mixture of white on white or the should I say the grunge paste and matte tint on that and then also onto the plain black and I think I'm going to like this bit even more. Let's have a look and we pull that off. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, look at that. So we've got some of the flower escaping into the black area. I think this one is probably, well, I was gonna say my favorite so far, but it's very difficult because I still love the other bit I was talking about making a keyring out of, but that, that in itself is just, just so pretty. So having just done that, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to try a very similar thing onto this brown tissue that came wrapped in some flowers using the same stencil. I'm loving this stencil. Um, yes, definitely. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some grunge paste with the matte tint and see how it responds to the brown background because I did like it on the black. The black was really quite striking and now that I've discovered that I like using part stencil on and part stencil off, I've lost the lid. Um, no idea where that's going to find that in a moment. So again this is grunge paste with matte tint. And again I've probably used maybe half a teaspoon of grunge paste. That's a little bit more runny this time than before. So I'm going to spread that onto the, it's a funny tissue paper, it's almost like a fabric. You can see there's a, like a thin texture running through, it's quite soft. So I'm going to spread that directly onto the tissue paper. I'm going to call it tissue paper. And again, I'm not going to do it so that it's completely flat. So it's darker in some areas than others. So you can see through some pieces and it's slightly raised more in others. Now be careful, you need to keep this moving quite quickly because otherwise what's gonna happen is gonna stick to whatever it is that you're working on underneath. Okay, so again, I'm going to press the stencil down onto that. I've got sort of dry raised areas on that, I probably should have washed it. Um, and again, I'm going to pop that down, press it, 
into where the grunge paste and matte tint is and then I'm going to scrape through to bring that grunge paste through the stencil and again dragging it so that the image of the flower extends where I've got the grunge paste and matte tint pasted onto the substrate behind it. Now I've run out. I should have mixed up a little bit more perhaps. Squeeze that into there. Now, I think whilst I've got that stencil down and it's secured by the grunge paste and matte tint underneath, I think what I might try whilst it's still wet and whilst it's secure, I'm going to put the matte tint over the top and see what difference that makes. Now, because this dragonfly is slightly, I think more pigmented than the other two, it's got a brighter, more definite color. I'm going to drip that onto the stencil whilst it's still wet underneath just as I can see what's going to happen if, I mean, I have no idea whether it's going to smudge underneath, whether it's going to stain what's on there. I have no idea, I've not done this before. So, and this is brilliant, this is just so much fun. I'm loving the colors on that, but I'm gonna have to wash that afterwards because obviously it's like a matte glaze, it's like a glue. So let's have a look and see what this is going to do to what I've got going on underneath and this would be quite interesting to redo on a white piece of paper or a piece of card to see how that works I mean it all looks very pretty at the moment but I have no idea how it's going to come out when I pull it off. Right, how long should I leave it? Ooh, goodness knows, let's take it off straight away because I don't want it to get stuck to the paper underneath. Wow, that is quite pretty in my opinion because what it's done where it's dried is it's pulled off and that's obviously on the back of my stencil so I'm going to need to wash that pretty quickly. Now if I was to, whilst this is wet, oh, don't let it get stuck cross. Um, if I then put that down onto a white piece Let's have a look and see how that responds to the white there. And I think I'm just going to push that through with a sponge. Whatever's left on the top, I'm going to push through underneath. So it's working it back through the hole. So I've got nothing wasted here. It's also cleaning the stencil as I go. I will wash it with water, but it's it's actually automatically mixing the glaze with the leftover. So this could be, this could be interesting. It could be a waste of time, but let's have a look and see how that then works with what's gonna come out the other side of. Again, what that's done is it's mixed the color. It's, it's made it softer. It's gone behind there. I have no idea how this is gonna come out. That's quite interesting in itself because what it's done is it's given me some raised areas on the card. I tell you what I am loving about this as I've dried it is how the colour is not solid. So where it's lifted some of the grunge paste off of the backing tissue paper, it's left me with some negative 
and positive shapes, but also I'm loving the way that it's got the darker and the lighter shades where the concentration of the matte tint is a bit more where it's, you know, the pigment is actually attached. And I like the way that it's, it's quite distressed and diffused on that. That's gonna make some lovely areas that I can rip off. And again, little sections within collage or on its own. There's so much you can do with it. It's, oh, I'm having a good time playing, can you tell? I think it's good to show things that do go wrong or things that you're not so keen on, you're not worth spending any more time on. However, again, it might be that you cut something like this out and then use it on something else. You might even want to put, I don't know, like a little rivet in there and use it somewhere differently because in its own context I think that, that actually could be quite a, a sweet little flower but as it is where it is I personally I don't like it because it's mm, it's not really my cup of tea but let it dry um, I might change my mind okay so the last piece of fabric I used was coated with gesso this isn't so this is just like a cotton the cotton, I think it was an old shirt, or a no, actually it was a pair of trousers, so I didn't like them very much because they were too see-throughs, so I thought, yeah, chop them up, let them use them into my art. So um, this time I'm going to use a little bit of the Dragonfly matte tint, and I'm going to use a sprinkle of just walnut um, infusions on that, and I'm literally going to just put the tiniest bit onto that. Now, as I discovered, when you are tapping onto that and you're leaving it as it is without mixing it entirely, what it does is it lifts the stain beautifully into one area. Now, I want to put that through a stencil um, and I think I will use the 272 on this one and I'm going to just very carefully dab that through. See how that still allowed the stained walnut pieces to stay as it is, but the colour has been brought out of the dragonfly in this, the um, in the turquoise there. I like to use paper underneath what it is that I'm doing because without thinking about it, it creates more collage fodder. I'm mixing a little bit of the dragonfly matte tint with the walnut infusions. I'm gonna use the same stencil, the 272, and I'm going to put that through again and what I tend to do is I press and twist to enable to push that through the stencil. And this time you can see it's a lot more teal colored um, and more of a solid color. But it, what I'm loving about this is that you're getting different shades. The, the matte tint is allowing it to be transparent in places which I think is going to be a lot of fun when I lift the stencil. So, oops, there's a little bit too much going on that one, so we've got a bit of a blob going on. I'm preferring the bottom part here where I've actually mixed the two mediums together to get the flatter colour. I think mixing these two products together is going to become quite a, a regular thing that I do. I think we can make a comparison. I've done exactly the same thing again. I've used the Dragonfly matte tint and I've used the uh, Infusions walnut and I've got it so that you can see it's not been mixed in at all. I've literally just dabbed that on and I wanted to do that so as I can compare the two, how it works with paper or card as opposed to using it on the fabric.
but I wanted to see how the two would compare both in pigment colouring and also application. So again, I'm literally dib dabbing onto my paint palette so as it keeps it so that the stain pieces are separated onto the sponge before I apply it through the stencil so that you get the colour separation on the two. If I was to mix the two together, you would lose the definition of the stain granule part parts. So what I mean by that is if you're mixing it together like so, you're going to get a lot more of a smooth colouring on the sponge as opposed to the spotted. So that then when you put that onto your piece, let's just move it up so you can see what I mean. By squeezing that through, it's going to become a lot more of a, a flat colour without the different pigmentation from the stain granules. Here you've got a lot more of the granules showing through. Here is where I mixed it together a lot more and the colour became more flat. Now if we can compare the two between the paper and the fabric, you see the fabric has absorbed the pigment at a, a deeper density, but you've got more definition, I think, possibly, with the pigments in the paper here than you have with the fabric. But either way, I think both have come out quite interesting. Okay, so as this one says, you can use it as a top coat um, for using over acrylic paints or an adhesive as collage. So with the very transparent -y bit that I used to begin with, plus the grunge paste that was mixed with the fern matte tin earlier that's nice and dry. Over the top of this rough collage piece of here, I'm going to put that over the top using it like I would with a collage. But then I'm going to put another layer over the top. Once that's dry, I'm going to put that through the sewing machine because the test for me would be to see whether it actually sticks to the sewing machine or whether the sewing machine can still run through it quite easily. Because as you know, I like to put quite a lot of stitching onto my work and where it goes underneath the presser foot, you need to make sure that it's not going to get stuck. So um, in this instance, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it onto the uh, my paint palette. I'm going to use a fairly large brush in order to put that onto the reverse side of the tissue paper so that that colour is there. I'm going to then turn that over and I'm going to paste that down onto my collaged area. Now I'm going over the top of that with the remainder of what's on my brush so that it becomes flat and also hopefully where that's where I can then just rip off the edge where that is going to come apart nicely and by watering as you probably already know watering the edge of tissue paper allow it to just tear away from the fibres giving it a very feathered edge and a very natural finish. Now I like the way that you can still see what's underneath through there but just to give it a second layer, I'm going to go over the back of the other piece and I'm going to layer that over the top of what I've already put down, going in, I think, possibly a different direction, across there, like so. And again, I'm going to wet the edge of it just to rip off the excess. Just so that you can see how by doing that second layer, it's become darker in, in that area where it's doubled over. I'm bringing in the other piece that's got the diamonds on from the walnut stain 
and the fern that I tried earlier and I'm going to paste that over the top of this one using the fern matte tint so it's becoming darker and darker and darker in this area here where the layers are going over one another now hopefully where this is transparent yes you are you're going to see the grunge paste pieces coming through but also the words are still there but they're still very subtle the way they come through the tissue paper so by building up the layers your colors are going to get stronger and the words are becoming more confused not confused more diffused so I'm liking the fact that your greens from the fern are becoming darker into this area here. It becomes a little bit more interesting because you've got the layers of the different colours and the different shapes going on. So again, if we think we're going to use a little window of that, you think about how that could be part of a tag or it could be a plant pot, it could be anything if you're using a section within that. So through all those test pieces, I've got an awful lot of collage fodder in which I then made a couple of things with. Take a look how I've pasted it onto some music paper. I've ripped up some of my test pieces and added them over the top. And then I took it to the sewing machine and added a little bit of stitching to that to make some focal points and created a card and a mismatched tag to go with it. Thank you for watching.